We are going to be discussing chain rule today, which is a, a very important concept in terms of neural network training. Chain rule is something that is covered when you study differential calculus. Now, don't get scared with the term differential calculus. Actually, it's very, very easy. I will try to give you the best and very simple explanation of chain rule today. As a prerequisite of this video, you should watch my derivatives video and it is best if you watch the entire deep learning series in sequence step by step so that there is a continuity. So let's get started. We just have theory today. We don't have any Python coding. I will use home price prediction example because that's the most simplest one, but the chain rule applies to all kind of deep learning neural network problems. The neural network for home prices uh, example would look something like this where you have area and bedroom and all you're doing is price is equal to W1 into area plus W2 into bedrooms plus some kind of bias. In my machine learning tutorials for linear regression, we have covered this formula already. So if you have watched those, you should be familiar with this. When you are training your network, what you do is you feed first sample to this equation and you, by the way, initialize your weights to, let's say, some random value. Here I initialize weight one and weight two to be one. And then you feed the first sample, you calculate the predicted price, which is called y hat. You compare that with your actual price, and then you find out an error, which is a difference between your predicted value and your actual value. And then you square the error. There are reasons why we square it, because your gradient descent converges in a better way. I will probably make a separate video because so many people have asked like, why don't you just take absolute value and why do we have to take squared value? But I will make a separate video, but just uh, accept the fact that it helps with your gradient descent. That's why we do square. So we go through all the samples one by one at, at, till the very end and we accumulate all these errors and then we take a mean out of it. it it's called mean squared error. It is also called loss. And once you have a loss, you back propagate that error. So till now, what you did is your forward pass. So in back propagation algorithm, there is a forward pass, there is a backward pass. So in the forward pass, you get a value of loss. And once you have the value of loss, you want to back propagate and adjust your weights. And the simplified, uh, architecture of our neural network might look something like this, where you do weighted sum of your inputs, then you have y hat, you take difference between y hat and your actual y, and then you square the error, and at the end you get a loss. And once you get a loss, you want to adjust your weight. So you want to uh, subtract something from your w1, right? So neural network training is all about coming up with the right weights. So here, uh, we have seen in previous tutorials, by the way, that W1 it will be equal to W1 minus learning rate into the partial derivative of loss with respect to W1. If this is new to you, again, I recommend you watch all my previous videos in this series. That way you have a background or a foundation to understand this mathematics. And we do the same thing with W2 and bias. And then after one epoch, which is going through all your training samples, you had your loss from loss, you calculated partial derivative, and then you adjust your weights. So here I've just put some random values. And let's say I get my new weights to be 0 0.8, 0 0.7, and my new bias is minus 0 0.2. And then you do another epoch, which is you feed forward all your training samples with the new weights. And you keep on doing this until you get the optimal weights where the error is minimum or you have reached global minima in terms of your gradient descent. So going back to our generic architecture here, what's happening is we are taking a loss, we are taking a partial derivative of loss with respect to E. Now going back to the power rule for derivatives, the derivative of loss with respect to e, which is an error, will be 2e. Because when you have e square, you put 2 in front of it, and then you subtract 1, which is 2 minus 1 is 1. Uh, so it becomes 2e. 
and then the partial derivative of error with respect to y hat is actually minus one because when you're taking partial derivative the other parameter which is y you just discard it and then what you get is minus y hat and if you have followed my derivatives video you will know that the partial derivative of minus y hat is actually minus one and then the partial uh, derivative of y hat with respect to w1 will be an area because again when you're taking partial derivative you make all your parameters zero so w2 will be zero b will be zero so this thing is gone now you have only w1 into area and the partial derivative of that with respect to w1 is is, is an area so now what is the partial derivative of my loss with respect to w1 because we got this individual partial derivatives now we want to get the partial derivative of loss with respect to w1 and why do we do that partial derivative is all about for a given change in w1 how much my loss would change so when we are doing neural network training i want to know when i feed area and bedroom those samples one by one I want to know for a given change in W1, what is the change in loss? Because we are trying to come up with the optimal value of W1 and W2 and partial derivative helps in that process. So this one will be nothing but multiply all these partial derivatives. And if you have studied math, you know that if you do the math here, uh, part, this, this DE and DE cancels out dy hat and dy hat cancels out so eventually what you get it dl divided by dw1 and that's what you have right it mathematically it makes sense so all you're doing is taking the partial derivative in each step then backward propagating and multiplying the partial derivative in the second step so here our final partial derivative of loss with respect to area will be minus 2e into area because I multiplied 2e with minus 1 which is minus 2e into area and this equation is called chain rule it is very simple you are just chaining your partial derivatives multiplying it basically you're taking product of your partial derivatives and uh, that product is nothing but a chain rule we might have multi-layer neural network like this uh, for our insurance data set. Uh, if the probability that person will buy the insurance or not might depend on these four factors, age, education, income, and saving. And age and education decides aff awareness and then income and savings might decide affordability. This is a dense neural network. Here in the case of awareness, my weight W5 and my weight W7 might be zero because let's say awareness might not have a relation with income or saving similarly for affordability this w2 and this particular weight might be zero because that might not have a relation between affordability might not have a relation between age and education although it might have but i'm just simplifying uh, the explanation here and i want to present this neural network maybe in a generic way because we i don't want to talk about just the insurance data set so generic way uh in terms of mathematics you can have neural network like this so all you're doing is you are having a bunch of mathematical equation at each step now neural networks are mostly non-linear you always have this activation function but again i'm simplifying an explanation here so when you have this kind of graph by the way this is called a computation graph you know you are having this fine grain computation and you are uh, summing the, or you are aggregating this uh, smaller equation to come up with a bigger equation and that is your computation graph again this these all mathematical terms like computation graph chain rule these are actually very easy there is no, no rocket science into this so let's go into this particular example here z is my final parameter and if i want to find out how much z changes for a given change in x so just think about this 
when you're talking about your insurance data set the likelihood like how much the likelihood of person buying the insurance changes based on the change in awareness or based on the changes in affordability and tracking these changes are very helpful in neural network training to come up with the optimal weights the whole art behind neural network training is to come up with optimal weights and once you have weights it becomes a simple mathematical equation and that is called your prediction function so this is the crux of deep learning guys you have to pay close attention to this whole game of given a change in x how much how much given a change in x how much my y is changing that is the crux of the entire deep learning science okay so here for a given change in x i want to find out how much my z is changing and that is nothing but a partial derivative of a z with respect to x and based on our rules it will be 4 because the you know when you're taking partial derivative you make y 0 so this becomes 0 and then the partial derivative of 4x is 4 then uh, you want to know for a given change in a how much my x is changing well that's partial derivative of x with respect to a and that is 2a because since you're taking partial derivative with respect to a you make b 0 so this becomes 0 2 comes in the front so it becomes 2a and 2 minus 1 which is 1 so you don't write it generally so it's 2a so now my partial derivative of z with respect to a is nothing but a chain rule you just multiply these two and it becomes 8a so i can say that for a given change in a which could be your feature in your data set such as age or affordability now you can say for given change in age how much my final output is changing so you see this is very powerful and the same thing if you want to do with b uh, derivative of z with respect to x remains same which is 4 and derivative of x with respect to b is 7 because then a becomes 0 7b's derivative is 7 and finally your derivative of z with respect to becomes with respect to b becomes 28 so i hope that clarifies some of the confusion you might have on a chain rule i am going to post some other video link uh, especially there is a video by khan academy they also explain this concept really well so you can watch those videos chain rule again is a mathematical concept which is covered in differential calculus but you all know that deep learning uses differential calculus to a great extent hence it's important that you understand these concepts you don't have to have expertise in calculus friends you can just learn the mathematics as you go so when you're doing this deep learning tutorial series let's say from my youtube channel what i'll do is i will try to cover these mathematical concepts one by one okay and i will try to make it uh, make the explanation really easy if you have liked this video please give it a thumbs up because that helps to bring this video to so many more people and also you can share this deep learning tutorial playlist on your Facebook, on your WhatsApp, on your Instagram. I'm putting a lot of effort, so I will really appreciate if you share this with um, many people, if you find this useful. Thank you. I will see you in the next video.